We have a couple of different ways that we can go about changing the speed of our video clips within DaVinci Resolve, whether we'd like super slow motion or to create a sort of time lapse effect. The two methods we can use are speed change and retime. Now, retime can get a bit deep, so we're going to devote a separate video for that where we go into depth on its various controls. But just know that we can access retime on any clip by pressing Control R. So I'm going to actually select this entire clip and just press Control R. And then at the bottom, we have this downward facing arrow where we can access a variety of different options. And I know this looks pretty simple, but you can actually do some complex things with retime. And we'll take a look at that in a future video. Now I'm going to press Control R to take that off. So for the remainder of this video, we're we'll focused on speed change and we have a couple of different ways we can go about accessing it. And before we do that, I'd actually like to create a separate clip, one that we're going to make some adjustments to. So when this bus comes in, look, I'm going to press S to split there. And once it leaves, we'd like to speed up again. So I'll press S again here. Then let's zoom in on this newly created clip. And the first way that we can go about accessing the speed change controls is by pressing R on our selected clip. And we have a variety of different settings that we can make use of. Now, another way is to come over to the inspector in the right corner here. If you don't see your inspector, just click on inspector in the very top right. And if we come down to the center area, we have speed change. So I'll click once to expand that out. And we basically have the same controls that we have when we press R on the clip here. So speed frames per second, we can see speed frames per second and so on. So for the direction, we can actually change the direction of the clip with these settings here. By default, it's going to be on forward to play forward. If we slow it down by half, it's still going to play forward. We can change to reverse it, or we can actually create a freeze frame with this snowflake here. So we have speed, and this is in percentage. So if we'd like to slow it down by half, then we would put in 50 here. Uh, the speed and frames per second are tied into together. So if I were to change this to say 15 frames, let's press enter, then we can see that the speed slows down to 50%. Uh, the duration is the duration of the clip. So if you have a specific duration in mind that you would like to slow the clip down or speed it up, you can actually put that in this field here. Now, next we have ripple timeline. So this is when this is activated, it's going to push or pull all of the clips that follow the one that we're making the adjustments to. So when I change this to 15 frames per second and it dropped the speed down by 50%, this clip should essentially double in length. Uh, and But we didn't see any changes within the timeline because ripple timeline was turned off. So we can see that we have a speed change applied to this clip because we have this icon in the bottom left hand corner. So let's actually control Z to undo that. We can see that that icon is now gone. Let's turn our ripple timeline on. And now just take note of the timeline when I change this to 50%. Let's double click, put in 50 and enter. Now we can see that the following clip was pushed back because our clip is essentially doubling in length. So now when we play this back, it should play back at half the speed once the bus comes forward. Okay, and not too dramatic of a difference. So let's actually change this to 25. And notice the timeline again. We'll adjust. Let's zoom out a bit. And let's actually take the volume down for our clip because we don't necessarily need to hear that. Let's play back again. The slowdown should be more dramatic. And we speed back up. Now, as we saw, we can also reverse the clip. So with it still selected, let's change that to reverse and play that back. Okay. 
And then we have pitch correction down at the bottom here. So this is going to help you achieve a more natural sound. So if you were working with narration, for instance, and you were to speed up the clip with that narration, you could get the chipmunk effect. And if you don't want that, you can check this box here. And DaVinci Resolve is going to do the best that it can to give it a more natural sound. Now, if you make extreme changes, speeding up or slowing down, of course, it's not going to sound that great. But you can experiment with the pitch correction here. Now, a couple of final things to mention is that for our speed, this can actually, this value can actually be keyframed. That's another video and it's beyond the scope of this one. But I did want to mention that we can keyframe our speed value. And also in the bottom right hand corner, we have a gear icon for our project settings. And if we scroll down to where we have the frame interpolation, we then have retime process. And this is going to apply to our retime processing as well as our speed change. And this is going to control the quality of the changes that we're making, whether it's slowing down or speeding up our video clips. So if we click on this, we have nearest frame blend and then optical flow. Now the first two here are more processor efficient and optical flow is the highest quality, but also the most processor intensive. So if you're not happy with the results in the default setting of nearest, then you can also experiment with the frame blend and the optical flow. Okay, and so that was a basic introduction to creating speed changes within DaVinci Resolve. Look out for a following video where we go more into depth and make use of the different controls that's available within Retime.